morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. How is everybody? Good. Well, I'm going to tell you how my weekend went. Um, so Friday we moved Lily into her apartment of van or of the entire Santa Fe and half a van's worth of stuff. Saturday we moved all of Isaiah and his stuff into his dorm. Um, this morning I slept through my alarm and then we discovered that mice had gotten into the communion um, wafers. So we are doing now the feast with no feast. <laughs> um, so we're going to see how it goes. I am sore and I am tired and I have no idea what may come out of my mouth. <laughs> So welcome to church this morning. <laughs> um, at any rate, we are thrilled to be here this morning to worship God, and we know that God takes us as we are, and we are thankful for that, and I am going to try not to cry this morning. Um, but we, I make no promises. So, um, so today, we will be doing Now the Feast still, um, but when we get to the point after the prayers, we are going to go just straight from the prayers into our benediction. Um, and conclude our service. Um, and I did manage to fix that in the screen, so you can follow along with the screen, but also in our booklet, we'll just kind of skip the whole Eucharist part. Um, and thankfully, the sermon will kind of tie into that. So I guess that worked out well. The spirit moves after all. Um, I do want to highlight uh, Bible study will pick up again this Wednesday morning. Um, starting at 9 a.m., we continue our study looking at um, the conflict that is currently happening between Israel and Palestine, some of the history behind it, um, and, and how it is continuing. Um, and a note that next Sunday, there will be no worship service here at St. Paul's. It is our annual pond service out of the Thorlites Pond um, at 10 a.m., so there will be signs on the door here telling you to go there. Um, but there will be no worship here. Um, and there is a reminder to please bring chairs and a disc to share with one another. We will have our service. We will have our um, luncheon. And then there will be fishing and games um, to spend some time with one another. So just a note on that. Um, are there any other announcements before I turn to our prayer list for this morning? Joyce. I put a sign-up sheet for pies for prayer review on Uh, any other announcements this morning? All right, then for our prayer list today, um, uh, Debbie Flessner got a hold of me and asked us to add Judy Poskins. Um, she is the classmate of Rick and Bruce, um, and she is scheduled to have a double lung transplant later this month. Um, so that's huge. Um, so we'll be adding her to our prayer list um, and keeping her in our prayers um, and then <clears throat> he is on our screen, and um, I, but I forgot to add him back into our bulletin, and um, I asked for continued prayers for Pastor Matt. Um, he did have his MRI this week, so we know a little bit more about the disc in his neck, um, and that there will be continued things. He's got a referral to um, a neurology, no, neuro, neurosurgeon um, coming up to uh, look some more into that, and it's... Um, continued frustration for him as he's not allowed to do a whole lot and um, and so we just ask for continued prayers as that moves forward um, and hopefully we get a few more answers and a treatment plan with that um, are there any other people to add to our prayer list for today all right then I invite you to stand as we turn for our brief order for confession and forgiveness in our booklet of now the feast or on our screen if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and just 
and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. First reading today is from Proverbs chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has 
hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You are simple. You that are simple, turn and hear. To those without sense, she says, come and eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. All right. Are you guys are you singing? I don't sing much, so don't put it on me. I just wanted to say real quick that uh, this song really does not go with Pastor's sermon today, but I felt uh, that I had to, we have to do this song because I had this stroke and I'm able to come back and sing for all of you because all of you have prayed for me. God has answered those prayers and I'm getting along very well. And I want to thank everyone here and thank God above for everything that has been done. And so this song is for him and for you guys. It's, it's about praying. It's called, Till the answer comes, you got to keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Till the answer comes, you got to keep praying. Keep praying till the answer comes. If you knock one time and there's no answer, well, don't turn away from the door. You've got to knock again until you've been let in. Sometimes it only takes once more. Till the answer comes, you got to keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Till the answer comes, you got to keep praying. Keep praying till the answer comes. Sometimes you might be on your knees for hours till the light finally comes shining through the dawn. But if you truly believe that his power will breathe life into your troubled heart, till the answer comes, you gotta keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying till the answer comes. Keep praying till the answer comes. Keep praying till the answer comes. Keep praying till the Kathy and Mike. <laughs> All right, so um, today's psalm is from, <clears throat> is in chapter 34, verses 9 through 14, if we could read responsibly. Fear of the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer a hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. Come, children, and listen to me. I will teach you reverence for the Lord. Who among you takes pleasure in life and desires long life to enjoy prosperity? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from lying words. Turn from evil and good. Seek peace and pursue it. All right, our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. Be careful then how you live not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs 
<clears throat> sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourself, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here ends the reading. You're already up here. Let's come a little bit closer. There you go. Oh, Nicole, where are you going? You want to come up here today? Okay, all right. I thought you were abandoning me. Oh, how are you doing today? Good? All right, excellent. I just forgot that I'm going to be about Oh, well, you know, I get it. It's Sometimes it's hard to remember everything in the world. Um, so, I'm going to jump right into the lessons today because there's just a lot going on. The, the first two are really about like thinking, right? So the first one talks about wisdom. You ever heard that word before? Wisdom. Uh, ever heard about being wise, being smart? That makes sense, right? right? What, what does it mean to be smart or to think, think about things? Okay, right, you pay attention, you try to learn, right? So that's kind of the first lesson, is that, that you just, you think it out, right? You'd be like, oh, you know what, you just don't immediately do something because that may not be the best option, right? So, you know, for instance, I know you, you were at Nashville this past week, right? Big new place, lots of people, much busier than Paxton, right? So, wisest thing, smart thing to do, Make sure you know where your mom is, where your aunt is, right? Pay attention, maybe hold somebody's hand, keep an eye on what's going on, right? Don't just walk out in the street, right? Those kind of things, right? The second lesson is, has the same kind of thing, right? But it's telling us to be wise about our faith, right? So to think about what God would want us to do and who God would want us to be, right? So those kind of things like that. Now, our gospel today, gets a little bit more um, out of thinking and more about actual, like, being, right? About flesh and blood. Mm, yeah. And um, one of the things Jesus talks about is giving us his flesh and blood. Yeah. But it's this great message about the idea that, that God gives us himself. Just like we are given each other, God does the same thing. So my thought was, maybe it would help us remember that God is with us if we gave each other pieces of our flesh. So I brought this um, handy dandy little pocket knife from home. Um, and so I'm gonna work on getting the knife out. It's gonna take me a little bit because it's kind of old and rusty. Um, and then I'm going to uh, figure out what piece of flesh you'd like me to cut off of you, okay? And then when I'm done with that, we're going to go around and get some of everybody else's flesh, okay? Um, you scoot it away from me. What's the Would you rather I use the spoon? I, I've got a spoon. I could, like, scoop something out. No face? Fork? I think i got a corkscrew in here somewhere. No, you don't want to give me a piece of your flesh? Nobody's going to want to do that. Unfortunately, somebody might, but I'm going to be like, I, I, I was kidding. Right. I'm kidding. I don't actually want a piece of your flesh. Nor do I actually know if I could get one of these knives out. And even if I did, I'm not putting that in my flesh. Right. Right. I'm joking. I wouldn't actually do that to you. Nor does Jesus want us to do that. Right. When Jesus talks about that, today it sounds disturbing, right? It sounds like that. It's like, you know, let me just have your arm and gnaw a little piece off, Jesus. <laughs> right? right? No, what Jesus is saying is there's no part of him that isn't available to us. Right? And, and there's no part of us that we need to hold back from him. Right? So if you think about prepare. You ever skinned your knee? Had a cut? Ever get a scab? Ever get really gross? Ever get really, and you're like, like, you know, ever had your mom go, don't pick that. 
leave that alone, right? I've got, I've got some nice ones from some kittens we got to play with, right? And it gets all gross and yucky, blah, 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 you know. And sometimes we feel like those are the parts we can't tell God about, <coughs> right? This is what hurts. This is what's gross. This is what, what is something I can't, I can't tell God about because God wouldn't like to know that about me. And what Jesus tells us is there's no part about us that God doesn't want to know and doesn't want to help with. Everything that hurts, everything that feels bad, everything that worries us, every joy, everything that excites us, every little piece of us down to our flesh and blood and inside things, God wants to be a part. And Jesus comes and says, that's what I'm giving to you so that you know you can give that to me. Right? There's nothing that, God, that we need to hold back from God because God holds nothing back from us. That's how deeply he loves us, all the way down to those parts that we don't ever get to see, hopefully. I don't ever want to see what's down in there. Right? <laughs> but God does. Right? Do you ever want to see what's down in there? No. No. Uh, some people do, right? That's why we have surgeons and all those fabulous things that help us with that. But, but God loves us all the way down deep into those parts and everywhere in between. So let's have a prayer. Jesus, sometimes you sound really weird with your flesh and your blood talk. But really what you mean is that you love us in every way. When we feel bad, when we feel good, when we feel weird, when we feel all of the ways that we feel, you are there with us. You love us to no end. And we are so thankful that we can bring to you every part of us. Thank you for that wonderful gift. Hold us tight when we need you. And show us the way when we forget that you are there. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. his flesh to eat. So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink of his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true, true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. So 
So at the end of my sophomore year of high school, my dad started a new career. <clears throat> this isn't a surprise to most of you. As you know, my dad came to nursing later in his life. And it wasn't a surprise to us as he had been studying hard for this for several years. His first job was really a continuation of some of his clinicals for the hospital he had been working with and liked best. It was the downtown Trauma One Take the Most Serious of Cases Hospitals. And he was going to be an ER nurse, uh, mainly working the night shift and specializing in the burn unit. All information we knew. What we didn't know was how the stories around the dinner table were suddenly going to change. While Dad would never tell us details about names, ages, etc., and this was before HIPAA and all of those laws, he would start to tell us things like, oh, wow, this man came in today that fell asleep on his porch with a cigarette in his lap. At this time, my dad was trying to quit smoking, but it was a little chilly out, and so he had pulled this blue plastic tarp over his lap to keep warm. Well, when that caught on fire, too, the plastic melted into the, his third-degree burns, and so as we were trying to delicately pull little pieces of blue plastic out of his legs, these small strings of flesh kept coming with them. At this point, my mom would interrupt. Um, dear? And she would gesture to my brother and I, who had understandably stopped eating our spaghetti, and say, maybe this isn't table conversation? Jesus, my dear, maybe this isn't table conversation. For the past several weeks, Jesus has talked about, around, over, and through bread. But today, there is no holding back for him. And it is about as visceral and as disgusting as a reality as it gets. Remember, these people that he is talking to have no concept what Jesus is talking about. Unlike us, they do not have an association of this conversation to communion. There's no bread to flesh, wine to blood. With metaphor, with simile, with any other literary motif. So as far as they are concerned, Jesus sounds like an absolute maniac, a crazy person who is offering up bits and pieces of his flesh and blood for people to take. No, let me rephrase that. He is demanding that people must consume bits and pieces of himself in order to live eternally. He's Dr. Frankenstein. He's Dracula. He's a madman. Quite frankly, he is disgusting in his graphic and descriptive nature of what that entails. In fact, the gospel today can pretty much be summed up in one word. Ew. But here's the thing, life can get pretty darn ill sometimes. From the weirdly gross stories, like our Iowa City friends telling us yesterday about their previous dog who used to like to steal and eat their underwear for no apparent reason, to the nitty gritty real life hard to handle moments like the first time you walk into the hospital room of someone who has a tube some suctioning things from some part of their body out through their nose. Or having to watch a loved one physically, emotionally, or mentally decline right before your very eyes knowing there is not one blessed thing you can do to stop it or change it. Tell me that is not a time you don't feel it straight down to your flesh and blood. And doubly so 
if you are the, on the other end of that scenario and the tube is coming out of your nose, or it is your body or your mind withering away. These are the moments that are as visceral and as gut-wrenching as they come. They're as real as any we experience. Even some of our moments of joy, like childbirth, like learning a new skill, like riding a bike, like moving, like sports, like farming, like just about any part of life, come with those bumps and bruises, those cuts and contusions and some growing pains. We are constantly reminded that we live within the confines of this flesh and this blood. And it comes with its weakness as well as its beauty. It's not surprising that some people used to think that Jesus and the early Christians practiced cannibalism. Blah. But think about it with all this talk of flesh and blood. But when it comes down to it, Jesus is just trying to get a deeper point across to the people. And here is where our lectionary does a bit of a disservice by breaking down this reading up over so many weeks of bread. Because we forget where it all started. Many, many weeks back, there was a huge group of people following Jesus. And they were listening to him. And they wanted to know more about him. And in order to make that happen, he had them sit down. And he fed them via a miracle of fish and bread. And suddenly, they wanted to make him king. And now, they've been following him, not to listen and to learn, but in order to see more signs and more miracles, more wonder. And the Jewish leadership has jumped in and they've begun questioning about whether he's important or not because, hey, we know his parents. How could he possibly be from God or from living bread, yada yada, when they can trace back his lineage? So somewhere, the story of son of man, son of God, has become, show us stuff. Give me stuff. So Jesus has to go next level. Those signs don't last. Like manna in the wilderness, it is awesome. And it keeps you going for the moment. But like your ancestors, the lack of faith in God led them to missing out on the promised land. It's not just about the miracle. So pay attention. Keep listening. Keep learning. In Jesus, in staying with him, in watching what he is about to do, in joining him on the journey to the cross, and seeing his flesh and his blood poured out, there's promise of new hope and new life. And that promise is assured. Instead of consuming the wonders and the miracles that will fade so easily, obviously, since they keep asking for more, the people should be partaking in every word, every action, the very being of Christ given for them. His flesh and his blood for the world. It doesn't get more real than that for us either. If there was communion right there, again, more than just today, more than just what goes on, we would know that Christ doesn't just live under that clean white cloth. Christ isn't just in the holy quiet moments or the clean spaces of our hearts and minds. Christ is in the dumb mice that do crazy things on a Sunday morning. 
Jesus tells us he is in the most visceral and gut-wrenching places of our flesh and blood because that is where we have invited him to be, where he demanded we put him because he knew we wouldn't survive those places without him. Every time we've invited him to be in and with and through us, in that bread and that wine, he fills those places a little bit more. He reminds us again that we don't do this on our own. That a little Jesus goes a long way. Or as a confirmand of my internship church put it, oh, Jesus burns. Right? When he needs to, Jesus burns within us. So that if it feels like the wilderness, we know we won't starve. And if it feels like the storm, we know we won't drown. Jesus tells us time and again that not only do we have a Father in heaven that loves us, that wants the best for us, but that we have a Savior who understands us, who knows flesh and blood like we do, who can hold us through the joys and the pains that come with this life who can also save us from the eventual sorrow that comes from being mortal, and who will raise us up to new life with him and all those others of flesh and blood that we love. That's why Jesus gets deep down to the gut level today, so that we understand that nothing is too much for him. There is no too for Jesus to talk about. Nothing too raw, too human, too disgusting for him to hold on to with us. He's not about the signs and the wonders. He is about the realities of our humanness and our deep need for God. And he is both. We need him. And he gives us his all. Amen.
Uh, before we stand for the creed, I will point out, and I know, I just know I did, um, I'm pretty sure I deleted the Lord's Prayer out of the service because of the pattern of which things go. But we will say our Lord's Prayer. Um, I do want to remind you that the creed and the prayer are slightly different in now the feast. Um, so we will say the creed, then the prayers, um, and then the Lord's Prayer, which is on page 13 in the booklet, and that's in your bulletin, and then we will go to the benediction. So I invite you now to stand for the Nicene Creed, and I'll announce those as we go along as well. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now calling on the spirit of wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Wisdom has built her house. May the church be a house of wisdom for all who enter. May we continue to grow and stretch in ways we never thought possible. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wisdom has mixed her wine. May the harvest seasons be plentiful this year. We pray for orchards, orchards vineyards, farms, and all of creation. Protect and conserve the earth and all those who tend to it. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wisdom has employed her laborers. Be with all those who seek adequate employment. Guide our economic and governmental leaders to support the people of our world with fair wages and safe working conditions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wisdom has set her table. May this congregation be a welcome table to all who seek refuge of God. Break down walls and barriers that prevent us from offering a seat at this table to anyone who may come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wisdom has invited her guests. Make your presence known to all who feel lost or abandoned or hurt at this time. Direct your spirit of care to all who seek healing and comfort. We remember especially this day, Irene, Lee, Al, Lisa, Shirley, Marilyn, Don, Heidi, Bonnie, Tim, Mason, Dawson, Pat, Gary, Char, Jeff, Kate, Steve, Bob, Judy, Matt, and all those who rest in our hearts and our minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Wisdom has shown her path of insight. May we journey on her paths, looking toward a bright future while remembering from where we have come. 
We give our thanks for all those who have completed their journeys and now rest in God's kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy keeping through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now turn to page 13 for our Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Make us bold, O merciful God, to address you as our Abba, as we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I now invite you to turn to page 17 for our benediction. Oh, 16. Okay, that's good to know that's wrong in the bulletin. All right. I'll change that in my notes. All right, page 16. Let's try that. <laughs> Mine is page 23, so there you go. All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> We're all over the place. Can I have a note, Kathy? Whatever. Okay. <laughs> Can I have a note? Oh, I'm Please. Sorry. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine on us and be gracious to us. May God look on us with favor and give us peace.